morning. Uh, let us continue our discussion on MO diagram for other molecules. So far we have seen MO diagram for H2 and then helium 2 and then Li2 and then similar diagram you can draw for beryllium 2. So, let us see more about MO diagram for um, other molecules. It is important to remember that in molecular orbital theory that um, mixing of orbitals. Okay. So, you have one energy level um, for example, you have one s orbital of one atom and it is represented like that. You have one s orbital of for another atom okay, it has one s orbital and these two energy levels atom A this atom B the, its energy level is here and they have same almost similar energy atom okay, one s orbital on atom A one s orbital atom B have the similar energy that is why they are able to interact and you will get two MO diagrams the MO in a molecular orbital energy levels which are represented in this way. If the how many number of electrons are here for example, 2 are there then they will go here 2 will go here and then 2 more will go here. So, at the end you, you can count the number of electron at the molecular orbital. So, the here is the the middle one is the molecular orbitals these are the these two are the atomic orbitals contributing atomic orbitals. The number of molecular orbitals is same as the number of atomic orbitals combined to give them. So, number of atomic orbital is 1, 2, number of molecular orbital is 1, 2 and number of electron also remain, remains the same. So, 4 electrons are there, number of electron is 2 plus 2, 4 electrons. So, this is a um, atom for helium because it has um, 4 electrons are there. Say so this in the same way, if you have energy levels, okay, so if you have 1 s orbital, 1 s orbital, um, orbital they interact and give it molecular orbital of this diagram and if you have 2 s orbital, 2 s orbital after 1 s you have 2 s orbital and then you have like that and they also interact each other and then you will get a MO diagram like that. Okay. So, for example, after helium you have a lithium Li2 and then you have beryllium. Let us see beryllium Be2 and then uh, you have a 2 electron here you have a 2 electron both of them will go here and will go, go here. In addition, you have beryllium one electronic configuration you have to remember for one beryllium atom 1 s 2, 2 s 2 s 2, okay, 2 s 2. So, the number of electron is into 2. So, equal to 8 electrons are there. So, 4 electrons are gone here. So, another 2 more uh, electron here, here 2 more electron and then you have to fill up and then fill up here. So, number of electrons in Be2 is 8 electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, 8 electrons and then the bond order is these two. This is a sigma orbital, this is sigma star orbital and again this is sigma orbital, this is sigma star orbital. To find out the bond order, this, these two are cancel each other and these two cancel each other. So, there is no bond between um, no bond in Be2. So, that means it does not exist Be2 like helium it does not exist. Let us see other molecules after beryllium uh, you have um, boron. So, if you look at the boron MO diagram as usual you can write if you this is 1s orbital of the boron atom. So, let us see B boron B2 electronic configuration is 1s 1s2 2s2 2p1. Okay. So, it 2 borons means uh, 5 into 2. So, number of electron is 10 electrons are there. So, 1s orbital you draw here another 1s orbital of the another boron atom here is the boron atom another boron the middle is the B2. So, you have 2 electron here and then 2 electron here they interact each other and you will get 2 MO diagrams which are connected in this way and then um, okay, this is 1s orbital. After that you have um, 2s orbital, 2s orbital they interact and then you will get like that. Okay. After that you have uh, 2p orbital, 2p orbital. So, in 2p orbital there are the two types of orbital, they can also form a sigma bond as well as pi bond. So, you have in, in, in image you have Px, Py and then Pz, the Pz is for 
is for forming sigma bond. These two for pi bonds. Two pi bonds can form using px py orbital. So they interact each other, and then you will have because um, okay interact to give one sigma bond and two pi bonds can form using three two p orbital. As we um, you have studied that a sigma bond is um, higher in energy, so that will be in lower energy. Okay, so then after that a pi bond comes because its energy is higher because overlap is less, so it is usually placed here. Then you have to draw like that and then draw like that. Then for these two and these two. And then you have a anti bonding pi star orbital and then a sigma star orbital. So, this is a sigma orbital formed by 1s orbital, this is a sigma orbital formed by um, 1s orbital, this is a sigma orbital formed by 2s orbital, this is sigma sorry, this is sigma star, this is sigma star orbital formed by 2s orbital, this one is the sigma orbital formed by 2p orbital, this one is the pi orbital that is px and py orbitals are there so pi orbital formed by 2p orbitals 2p orbitals okay so this is a, a pi star orbital formed by 2p orbital this is a sigma star orbital formed by um, 2p z orbital okay so this is 2p z sigma orbital formed by 2p z orbital sigma star orbital is formed by 2p z orbital so, now if you fill up for boron as um, as we have seen before, now what we have drawn here is the um, mixing of 1s orbital with 1s orbital, 2s orbital with the 2s orbital, 2p orbital with the 2p orbitals. So, we mixed them and we drawn the energy levels accordingly. Um, okay. Now, you fill up the electrons, 10 electrons are there, 2 put here, 2 put here because 2 also, another one is the uh, 2s2. So, there are 2 here, there are 2 here, the both of them okay, all 4 will go here. On top of that 2 p orbital, there is 1 electron here, it can be here, it can be here. Then you have to put here because it is the this orbital lower energy. Now if you look at that, now both electrons are in 1 orbital that is sigma orbital. Now that means the molecule is, okay, the molecule is a diamagnetic as of now. Actually, it is not diamagnetic. Experimentally, B2 is not diamagnetic. That means um, there is um, electrons are paired up. Diamagnetic means electrons are paired up. Paramagnetic means uh, there is a presence of at least one electrons. So, B2 is, uh, is not diamagnetic. So, actually, experimentally, experimentally. Experimentally, B2 was found to be a paramagnetic molecule. Okay. B2 is a paramagnetic molecule. So, if you fill up the molecular orbital diagram in if using this energy levels, this type of energy level, you will end up with wrong conclusion about the B2. Bond order, if you want to calculate bond order, order equal to number of bond electrons. So, these two cancel these two cancel and then about here there is a um, two electron in the bonding orbitals. So, there is no electron in the anti bonding orbital. So, 2 divided by 2 equal to 1, bond order is 1 that is correct, but the nature of the molecule is not diamagnetic, it is a paramagnetic. Okay. Experimentally observed that it is a paramagnetic, B2 is a paramagnetic, then that means the, the diagram which we drawn just now is, is, okay, is, is incorrect. So, what is the energy level, correct energy level diagram? Even if you go for example, uh, okay, it, it failed to um, explain our experimentally observed phenomena. Okay, experimentally what is observed is a paramagnetic which is not supported by the this theory. So, then let us look for the uh, whether it is a case, same case for C2 molecule. For next molecule is after boron you have a carbon C2 molecule, there the number of electron is, okay, is a 12. 12 electrons are. So, 12 electron will go here. Okay. After filling up, these two energy levels are degenerate. Okay. So, these two energy levels are degenerate. That means, they have equivalent in energy. Okay. So, so, when they are equivalent energy, two electron, two, the remaining two more electron to be for carbon C2, two, two more electrons are there. Okay. So, those two will go to these two orbitals 
1 by 1 okay, according to Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity and then you will end up with conclusion of paramagnetism. So, as per this diagram you will see that you will you can predict that C2 is a paramagnetic actually it is not paramagnetic it is a diamagnetic molecule. Then that means this diagram is not a suitable diagram to explain the experimental observed um, properties of certain molecules for example at least B2 and C2. Then what is the correct diagram to explain the property? Okay. To see to before we draw what is the correct diagram we have to understand okay, the concept of mixing. Okay. So, mixing of orbitals mixing of orbital mixing of orbital is possible as long as energy levels are similar and symmetry is same okay for mixing of orbital two condition primarily two conditions are required okay energy levels energies okay energies are similar and symmetry of the orbitals which are mixing should be the same symmetries the same okay as long as these two conditions are met okay mixing can take place so what we have drawn here is the mixing of 1s orbital with 1s orbital of another atom 2s orbital of the uh, of one atom with 2s orbital so because these two energy levels are uh, similar or equal so that's why mixing takes place between these 2s orbital and 2s orbital okay now there is also if the energy is so big, but there is no mixing between 1s orbital and 2s orbital because the energy levels, the energy difference between 1s orbital and 2s orbital is very large, there is there is no mixing between 1s orbital and 2s orbital. Okay. But if there is, um, if they are in closer in energy, there will be a mixing, that is what happening um, um, for elements um, on the left side for, for L2. Okay, or for a lithium 2, lithium 2 uh, N2 molecules, for lithium 2 N2 molecules, there is a, a significant mixing of 2s orbital with 2p orbitals. There is a mixing between 2s orbital and 2p orbital of one atom within one atom. As a result, when there is a mixing happen and then when they uh, uh, interact each other, energy levels are reversed. So, how it can happen? Because actually the mixing depends on effective nuclear charge that is represented by Z star, G, Z star which is lower than the actual nuclear charge. So, this is called effective nuclear charge. Okay. So, that effective nuclear charge increases from left to right. Okay. So, when you go from lithium to okay, fluoride lithium to fluoride the effective nuclear charge that is Z star increases increases when the nuclear charge increases okay that is nuclear charge means the power to attract electron towards itself okay so that increases from lithium to fluoride when it is increases okay the electron present in different orbitals are attracted towards nucleus in different ways so you have after um, um, nucleus after the nucleus you have 1s orbital and then you have 2s orbital and then okay so you have 2p orbitals okay after the nucleus so these orbital electron present in these orbitals are attracted towards nucleus in different ways or are in different attracting different um, different extent as a result as a result okay so they are pulled towards each other as a result, there is a mixing between 2s and 2p orbital for elements located on the left side. For example, Li2, N2. If you go to O2 to F2, okay, the nuclear charge is increased. So, uh, so the mixing is less for here because uh, the, um, the gap between 2s, the 2s and 2p gap is large. Okay. So, no mixing, mixing for these elements, for these, for these elements, for these molecules or elements, there is no mixing of 2s, 2p orbital. What is the reason? The energy gap is more. Why energy gap is more? Because 
nuclear charge is higher when nuclear charge is higher okay 2s orbital is pulled more compared to 2p orbital so that means the gap is increased when the gap is increased energy difference is more there is no mixing that is what happening for the elements located on the right side but that is not the case for the elements located on the left side because there the nuclear charge is okay less so that means 2s and 2p orbitals are not attracted as much as okay is not attracted as much as attracted for elements of this type so um, so as a result there is a mixing for these elements when there is a mixing 2s orbital 2p orbital mix and then the, when they interact energy levels are reversed so you can see that if you draw a diagram i am going to draw only the 2s orbital this is a 2s orbital you have another 2s orbital of another atom okay so there is a energy level they interact and then they form then you have a 2p orbital you have a 2p orbital you have a 2p orbital here and then as usual okay there is a bond okay there is a double bond okay pi bond this is a sigma orbital this is pi orbital and then on top of that you have a pi orbital and then sigma orbital so you draw a diagram here and you can show the interaction in this way and then you can show like that and you can show because now okay so, um, there is a mixing between 2s and 2p orbital then this is sigma star this sorry sigma this is sigma star orbital this is pi star orbital okay this is sigma star orbital big okay so because the new effective nuclear charge is less for elements located on the left side there is a mixing between 2s and 2p orbital so let us see that this type of initially this type of um, energy levels are formed so because of mixing this sigma orbital is mixes with the sigma orbital formed by 2p orbital so there is a mixing okay there is a mixing okay mixing between molecular orbital formed by 2s orbital sigma orbital molecular orbital formed by 2s orbital and the sigma orbital formed by 2p orbital they mixes so as a result the higher energy level this one is increasing energy the lower energy level sigma orbital is decreasing energy when this is increased this is decreased the pi orbital remains as such so as a result there is a reversal in the order of orbitals mo molecular orbitals that i can show you in this way so keep this energy level as such okay so you have two orbitals so draw the diagram corresponding to this one 2p orbital this is 2p orbital accordingly you have a 2p orbital here and then you have a okay so 1s orbital sorry 2s orbital here you have a 2s orbital 2s orbital now because of mixing this energy level okay this energy level this this sigma orbital formed by 2p orbital okay is mixes with um, uh, sigma orbital formed formed by 2p 2s orbital because it is located in higher in energy it goes up and this is lower in energy so there is a reversal so when this goes up okay so that is it goes here okay there is a interaction here and interaction here and then okay so this level can be decreased here and there is a decrease and then you have a, um, a sigma orbital um, formed here and then after that you have a pi star orbital after that you have a sigma star orbital so this is a sigma star orbital forming 2s orbital and this mixing after mixing this is a result this is sigma star orbital this is pi orbital this is sigma star or sigma orbital this is sigma pi star orbital this is sigma star orbital so you can see here there is a reversal in the order of molecular orbitals here when there is no mixing sigma orbital is lower energy when there is a mixing sigma orbital is higher energy compared to the pi orbital okay so this sigma orbital is resulting from mixing of 2s orbital and 2p orbital so you have to show the diagram from 2s to here and here and then here and then here you have to show so it is a sigma orbital formed by 2 2p orbital as well as 2s orbital so that means it has character of both 2s and 2p orbitals and pi orbital energy level is not affected 
okay, because of this interaction, this orbital is increase energy, this orbital low, lowered in energy, I am giving this type of MO diagrams. Now, this is the energy level present in elements present in the left side, in the left side. So, if you fill up this diagram, this type of diagram using number of electron present in boron atom, then you will end up with the correct um, diagram and supporting the experimental observed um, property of that molecules. So, if you take a molecule for example, B2 number of electron is 10, okay, so 4 already consumed for example, so you have um, Okay, let me show you in another diagram. So, you have a um, 1s orbital of boron. So, let us say construct a diagram for B2 again. So, this is a 1s orbital, 1s orbital, they interact and then energy, okay, energy level is formed and then on top of that you have, okay, so you have 2s orbital, 2s orbital, okay, and then they interact. Okay, because of um, mixing, okay, so you have lower energy pi orbital and then sigma orbital. The contributing orbitals are 2p orbital, okay, so the corresponding 2p orbital. So, this has uh, here on top of that you have a pi orbital, on top of that you have a sigma star orbital, this is pi star orbital. So, this one is a sigma orbital formed by 2s orbital as well as 2p orbital. So, you have to show the diagram there, it is there. For B2, number of electron is 10, here 2, 2 here, so it is 2 here, 2 here, they cancel each other for bond order calculation purpose. Here there are 2 electrons, here there are 2 electrons, so 2 go gone here, 2 gone here. Now, okay, there is 1 electron, because electronic configuration boron is 1s2, 2, 2s2, 2p1. So, number of electron, total number of electron is 10, so there are 5 electron on each boron atom. So, here there is 1, here is 1. So, both of them, there are 2 electrons are available and there are 2 degenerate orbitals are there. Then, both electron will not go to the same orbital, when there is another orbital available which is having equal energy, that is these, these 2 orbitals are called degenerate orbitals. Okay, so, equal in energy and you have number of electrons 2 only. So, both electron will not go into the same orbital. Okay, according to the Huns rule of maximum multiplicity, electrons are occupied, if energy levels are equivalent, electron will go to each orbital one by one. They are occupied separately. So, 2 electron, 2 molecular orbital, so 2 molecular orbital, degenerate molecular orbital, one here and one here. Then, okay, now the bond order remains the same. Okay, bond order is 1, but the molecule, nature of the molecule is changed. Now, it is a paramagnetic. So, because there are, there are two unpaired electrons, one here, one here. This is a pi orbital formed by, okay, this is the pi orbital formed by Px and Py orbitals. This is a sigma orbital formed by 2p sigma, okay, this is a 2pz orbital. So, okay, there are two electrons in these orbitals, the bond order is 1, the molecule is paramagnetic. Now, okay, now this diagram explains the experimentally observed property of the B2, that is paramagnetic. In the same way, you can fill up the diagram for B2, for, for, for C2. Here, the number of electron is 12 electrons, number of electron is 12. Now, already we filled up in this diagram 10, then two more will go here. Okay. Now, when you fill up these two, because this is higher in energy, this is higher in energy. So, these now it explain that the C2 is, is a diamagnetic. Okay, C2 is C2 is diamagnetic, and the bond order here equal to so bond order called pur purpose these two cancel each other these two cancel each other and then you have a bonding orbital so there are four electron the anti bonding orbital there is no so bond order is equal to number of electron present in the bonding or orbitals molecular orbital that is 4 minus 0 divided by 2 okay equal to 2 the bond order is 2 for c2 now this diagram explain the property actual property of the c2 which is diamagnetic so, this is a actual diagram should be used, correct diagram should be used for explaining the property of um, C2 
or B2 molecules. Okay. Now, you can also um, fill up this energy level diagram for N2. Here, number of electron is 14 electrons are there, 7 electrons from each nitrogen atom. So, 2 more electron compared to this one. So, those 2 electron will go to here. Okay. Now, I am removing this because we are changing that. And uh, now 14 electrons are there. Now, 14 electrons you can count 2, 2, 2, 2. So, 8, okay, 10, 12, 14. 14 electrons are there. Now, the for N2, the bond order equal to number of electron present in the. So, these two cancel each other. You have 6 electron in the bonding molecular orbital. So, 6 minus 0 by electron in the anti bonding molecular orbital divided by 2 equal to 3. So, there is a uh, N2, N, N, N triple bond between two nitrogen atom, triple bonds present in between two nitrogen atom and the molecule is diamagnetic, no problem here where molecule is diamagnetic, they, you can explain that. Now, there is some, um, this is the energy level diagram for uh, elements um, from, this is a suitable en energy level diagram for elements Li2, N2. Now, let us see the energy level diagram for O2, for for O2, okay. for as usual you can start with 1s orbital, 1s orbital interact, 2 energy levels are formed and then you have okay, 2s orbital, okay, 2s orbital interact and then energy level is level formed and then you have a um, pi, okay, you have a, um, a sigma orbital, there is a a sigma orbital then pi orbital so you have a 2p orbital you have a 2p orbital so a pi bond is formed as, as well as pi star orbital uh, pi star orbital also formed and then this is a sigma star orbital so this is formed here in this way and uh, you can construct a molecule here is a o here is a o this is o2 here this is the o2 now electrons here is the eight electrons are there Okay, 8 electrons here, there is a 8 electrons, in total 16 electrons, 2 here, 2 here, here, here and here, 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 here and here. And now here energy levels is a first orbital, when, when you come to here, this is a sigma orbital formed by um, 2p orbital and this is a, a pi orbital formed by 2p orbital. Now you see here the sigma orbital is lower energy compared to pi orbital because nuclear charge is more for O2. As a result, there is no mixing between 2s and 2p orbital. Okay? So, okay, there is no mixing. When there is no mixing, sigma orbital is lower energy compared to pi orbital. So, you have to fill up the diagram according to this, um, fill up this diagram um, using the number of electrons. So, 18 electrons are so, you have to fill up here and here and here and here and then two more electron will go to here. So, now these two energy levels, this is pi star orbital uh, formed by 2 p orbital, this is sigma star orbital formed by um, 2 p orbital. Okay. So, number of electron is 16, 2, 2, 2 to 8, um, 8 to 10, uh, 12, 14, 16, 16 electrons. Here, uh, when you put the um, two, or more, two more electrons, because these two energy levels are degenerate, orbital should these are molecular orbital should be occupied one by one. So, you have two unpaired electrons. So, O2, okay, two unpaired electrons, two unpaired electron, two unpaired electron. That means, O2 is a paramagnetic. Yes, that is correct. O2 oxygen is paramagnetic nature. Now, here I want to point out that uh, what is the status for as far as valence bond theory is concerned. According to valence bond theory, electrons should be paired up. When there are two bond, um, bonds between two oxygen, there is a two bonds. That means, uh, the maximum number of electrons are paired up. So, valence bond theory predicted the oxygen molecule as, as, as a diamagnetic because electrons are paired up. Valence bond theory, according to valence bond theory, O2 should be a diamagnetic. Because the stress in valence bond theory is on pairing electrons. Wherever the electron, for bond formation, electrons should be paired up. You need two, two number of electrons for formation of one bond. 
that is the basic concepts of uh, balance point theory okay so as as as, as per its um, okay um, principle uh, balance point theory predicted that it is a diamagnetic so it is not diamagnetic it is actually it is a paramagnetic so th this is the one of the failures of valence point theory to explain the actual molecule that's why another theory this theory that is molecular orbital theory was developed which explain what is observed um, experimentally so valence point theory predicted o2 as a diamagnetic paramagnetic okay but actually it is a paramagnetic that can be explained only by mo diagram molecular orbital diagram because you have two electrons here two unpaired electron one electron in each pi star orbitals that is why O2 is a paramagnetic. So, you um, in molecular orbital theory you just calculate to find out the what is the bond order you have to find out number of electron present in the bonding molecular orbital minus number of electron present in the anti bonding divided by 2. So, what you need is okay according to molecular orbital theory okay one electron is sufficient okay enough one electron is enough for bond formation okay so one electron is sufficient for bond formation but in valence bond theory you need to have two electron for bond formation that is a major difference so this is a now another concept to which i would like to introduce here is the what is homo and then what is lumo Homo is the highest occupied, this means highest occupied molecular orbital. So, Lumo means lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So, what is lum homo lumo? Here for oxygen molecule, highest occupied molecular orbital is pi star orbital. That is uh, sorry, so highest occupied all molecular. What is lumo? Lowest unoccupied molecular, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, sigma star orbital. So, that is what uh, that is how you can identify which is homo, which is lumo. Homo is the molecular orbital okay, occupied, highest occupied molecular orbital for O2 is pi star orbital because this is the orbital occupied. So, on top of that you have a LUMO which is the lowest unoccupied molecular. So, on top of this there are some more orbital, on top of this there are some more orbital which are not shown here. So, this is the first unoccupied molecular orbital that is uh, that is called lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Highest occupied molecular orbital is this one, lowest unoccupied, unoccupied molecular orbital is this one that is LUMO. So, this is a LUMO, this is a HOMO for O2. See it changes as that you can find out based on the occupancy of the orbital you can find out for every molecule which is LUMO which is um, HOMO. Now, now so you have molecular orbitals. Now, suppose this is a energy level diagram for O2. Now, the same way you can fill up molecules such as um, F2, okay. Number of electron is A, okay. A is, it is it's 18 electrons are there because 9 electron from each fluorine atom. So, both uh, remaining 2 more electron will go to these 2. So, the bond order is now will change to 1 because the bond order number of electron changes in the um, number of anti bonding electron is changed. So, bond order is 1. So, similarly you can fill up for any 2, um, so that 2 more electron will go to this one and there is no bond between 2 he, ne, um, okay, neon atoms and that molecule does not exist. Now, suppose, okay, so this is energy level diagram, it is you know that, that okay, there are species O2, 2 minus O2 minus and O2 plus, here 2 electrons are added because you take a O2 plus 2 electron you give then you will have O2 2 minus it is a peroxide ion and similarly and and then if you look at the bond length and bond order here for O2 the bond um, okay, the bond order bond order is 2 the bond length is equal to 121 picometer okay and then 2 more electrons are gone given to the O2 
and then it is found that the bond order is okay here the bond order is 1 okay and then bond length is bond length is 149 picometer okay so 2 minus so 2 minus means 2 electrons 2 minus equal to 2 electrons where does where where do they go so when you, this is a O2 molecule you give electron 2 electron to O2 those 2 electrons will go to okay the orbital molecule orbital okay which is not occupied so if you look at these orbital which are singly occupied that means there is a space so the both electron will go to this pi star orbital when electrons are added to the pi star orbital it is going to affect the bond order so the bond order when you draw when you, when you draw calculate for 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 o2 2 minus you know, i am drawing only the um, outermost electronic configuration molecular orbital configuration so you have a 2p orbital 2p orbital then you have a, a sigma orbital then you have pi orbital pi orbital sigma orbital okay o2 means uh, here two more electrons this is o2 2 minus the number of electron is 18 electrons are there okay because in o2 in o2 number of electron is 16 so in uh, in o2 2 minus means 2 electrons so 16 plus 2 equal to 18 electrons that has okay that will go here in this way in this way filled up and then here 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 and here so filled up now if you calculate the bond order for o2 equal to number of electron present in the bonding molecular orbital it is 6 okay number of electron present the anti bonding orbital this is pi star orbital this is pi orbital this sigma orbital this is sigma star orbital so 6 okay number of electron present in the bonding molecular orbital minus anti bonding electron 4 divided by 2 okay so you will have okay so 1 the bond order is 1 2 by 2 equal to 1 so that's why i written here when you give 2 electron to O2, it becomes O2 2 minus. Okay, the bond order is 1, the bond length is 149. Whether it is lower, higher compared to the starting O2, the, when you compare the bond distance found in the O2, it is 121 picometer only. Now, after giving 2 electron, the bond length is increased to 149. What is the reason? Because electrons are added to the anti bonding orbital. Whenever electrons are added to the anti bonding orbital, bond length, okay, bond order decreases. Bond order decreases. When the bond order decreases, bond length increases. Length is increased. So, as you can see here, here bond order is 2, bond order is 1. Okay. So, bond order when bond order is higher, okay, its length, length is okay, 121. Okay. And when bond order is increased or decreased to 1 bond length is increased that is 149 so let us see if you have okay, o2 minus superoxide now the one more electron will go to if you consider for one o2 minus you have you have to put only one electron minus means one electron that will go to okay here so you will have for o2 minus the bond order equal to 6 minus number of electron present in the anti bonding orbital is 3 divided by 2 equal to 3 by 2 equal to 1.5 okay so the bond order in this case for o2 minus bond order equal to 1.5 and the ovo distance was found to be 126 picometer similarly you can have okay o2 plus that means okay electrons are removed from o2 which electron will go away the electron present in the highest energy levels so if you want to make a o2 molecule o2 plus molecule o2 plus molecule that means one electron is less compared to o2 so that which electron will go away it this is it is this electrons will go away any one of these electron because they are degenerate one of the electron will go away now you can calculate the bond order that is 6 minus 1 that is 5 by 2 that becomes bond order becomes 2.5 okay for o2 the bond order equal to okay 6 minus 
number of electron present in the anti bonding orbital is 1 divided by 2 5 by 2 equal to 2.5 is the bond order. Then O O distance equal to in O 2 plus is 1 1 picometer. Now, I am going to summarize them. Okay. Now, okay, so if, I, if, I, if I summarize them, the highest bond order is found for O 2. Okay. So, O 2 plus is has the highest bond, bond order. Then you have your O 2. Then you have so called O 2 minus. And then you have O 2 2 minus. Okay. The bond order okay, is here it is 2.5, here it is 2, here it is 1.5, here it is 1 only. Then bond length if you look at it, okay, it is 1, 1, 2, it is 121, 126, this is 149 picometer. So, you can observe relationship between the bond order and bond length. Okay. So, the bond order increases bond okay so then as it increases okay this decreases bond length decreases so as it decreases so increases okay so this increases okay so then it decreases okay bond length decreases so as the bond order increases bond length decreases in this as shown by this way and 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 also you can see here O2 the bond order is okay 2. If you go to okay O2 2 minus bond order is 1. Here it is 1.5 that is in between these two. So uh, that also you can see here the bond length is 149. Here bond length 121. 1.5 is between 2 and 1. So as similarly the bond length also between 121 and 149 that is 126 observed 126 picometer. So, so uh, you have to remember that when electrons are added, it will go to the highest orbitals. That is, in case of O2, it will go to the antibonding orbital. When electrons are added to the antibonding orbital, bond order decreases. So, when electrons are removed from O2, it is the highest orbital electrons is removed. So, it becomes so when the highest orbital in O2 is the pi star orbital. When electrons are removed from pi star orbital. Okay, then the bond order increases that is why in O2 plus the bond order is 2.5. When electrons are added to the antibonding orbital bond order decreases that is why in O2 2, 2 minus the bond order is 1 bond length is longer. So, you have to remember plus means minus electrons minus minus means addition of electron plus means subtraction of electrons. So, you have to use two types of diagrams. So, if you want to use for uh, for atoms lithium Li2 N2, you have to use this type of diagram. 1s orbital, 1s orbital and then you have a yeah, 2s orbital, this is a 2s orbital, this is 2s orbital. Okay, so, you have 2s orbital here and then you have 1s and 2s orbital and then you have 1s orbital and then you have a pi orbital and then there is a, a sigma orbital then is it is a 2p orbital this is 2p orbital and then that interact and that interact and it is interact this is also you have to draw a line like, like that and then there is a pi orbital, pi star orbital, there is a sigma star orbital here. Now, so this is a diagram should be used for molecules from Li2 to N2. As you can see here, okay, so as usual there is a sigma, sigma star orbital, but pi orbital energy level is lower compared to sigma orbital, higher, this is higher in energy compared to pi orbital. For molecules from O2 to you have to you have to use this diagram this is 2 s this is 2 s then you have a sigma orbital 2 p orbital 2 p orbital and then you have pi orbital okay. 
So, this is a an, um, molecular orbital diagram should be used for O2 to F2, for Li to N2, this is the energy level diagram. If you mix and use it, then you will not get the correct result. And then you will be predicting paramagnetic molecules, diamagnetic, diam and vice versa. Thank you.